Hello, my name is Dr. Marty Martin, and I'm Director and Associate Professor in the College of Business at DePaul in Chicago, Illinois. My area of focus is in healthcare, and in fact, direct the Health Sector Management MBA program. So we've been talking a little bit about, if you've been watching this series, about quantitative tools and quantitative aspects in healthcare management. And the last part that we talked about focused on structured decision making and four barriers to good decision making. Now I want to present a whole series of tools. So if you'll note, is this series will do these tools, brainstorming, capacity analysis, cause and effect, time series methods, statistical process control, you got to say that kind of slow, decision matrix, flow charting, and lastly, incidence and prevalence. Now some of these concepts and words are familiar to you, others aren't, don't worry about it. By the time we go through each one of these segments, you'll have some familiarity and also as well, be able to perhaps use that particular skill or tool in your setting. So let's begin with the first one, brainstorming. Everybody knows what that is, so I don't have to tell you what it is, yep. But as a refresher, let me first talk about the so what of brainstorming. So why should you use brainstorming? There are a couple reasons. One is, is that you have a point of view, you have a perspective that is limited by your particular set of assumptions, limited by your knowledge, limited by your skills, limited by your position in the organization, limited by your experiences. So if presented with a problem or presented with an opportunity, you'll come up with a list about what to do. But if you invite others, and others who have a different point of view, a different experience, a different perspective, a different occupation, you'll have a larger list and a more comprehensive list. So really the fundamental goal of brainstorming is to gather as many possibilities as possible. So in fact, you want to do what they call, you want to kind of diverge first, and then when you make the decision, you want to converge. But good brainstorming is about converging, widening it, not narrowing it. So it's extremely important that when you brainstorm, invite people to the table that are different from you, even if they're a little bit weird, yep, and then once you invite them to the table, encourage them and invite them to freely contribute ideas. Now if they contribute an idea that in your gut you say, you know what, that was really stupid, then don't say that and don't give a facial expression, and don't do uh, none of that. Because if you do that, you may shut that person down. You may not shut that person down, but somebody that's observing you, if you went, uh, that was dumb, then they're going to be a little bit fearful, say, you know what, mm, I don't want that, so I'm going to keep my mouth shut. So bringing diversity people to the table is step one. Two is fully leveraging the diversity that you bring to the table by encouraging wild and crazy ideas. So let's take a look at this particular image. So you see here kind of a crowded emergency room. So kind of gurneys everywhere, people in the hallways, a little bit chaotic. So I'd like to ask you this question. What are the causes of this? Now, remember, you have your point of view, your perspective. But if you really are going to engage in brainstorming, you would invite others to the table. Who would you invite? Once you invite them, how would you make sure that they freely contribute wild and crazy ideas? Now for those of you that say, ooh, I'm not wild and crazy, can't deal with that, well here's the thing to remember. Once you have all these wild and crazy ideas, you're eventually going to select those that are more reasonable and feasible. But you don't do that while you're brainstorming. Again, you don't do that while you're brainstorming. Because remember, you first do what? Converge, then you diverge. Now let's talk about the second tool, which is related, which is capacity analysis. Because if you really go back to that particular image of the crowded waiting room, it's probably about either the demand is too high, yep, or the capacity is not enough. Hence, you kind of have chaos in the hallways. So what is capacity? It's really the maximum level of output. So the maximum level. So it's really balancing kind of demand with the resources that are available to meet that demand. So what are some examples of capacity measures in healthcare? Number of available beds, number of patients treated. Can you think of any others in your particular setting? 
Now let's talk about capacity utilization. It's the rate of output actually achieved, so that's capacity used. But you fundamentally have to look at your best operating level. And I'm going to show you a graph that will really tell that particular story after you take a look at the formula. So the formula is capacity used divided by the best operating level. And that will give you the percentage of the utilization. It can range from 100% to 0%. In actuality, it can be greater than 100%. So here's a graph that I was telling you about, best operating level. So if you notice on the bottom, it has volume from low to high, and it has average unit cost of output from low to high. So if you note, you see the underutilization, yep, so you're not fully deploying all the assets that you have available. That's not optimal from a financial point of view, maybe from a staffing point of view. Then if you swing over, then you have overutilization. So here you have you know, stretched resources. Uh, people are having to do overtime. Uh, maybe things are feeling squeezed. So you really want to go for the sweet spot. So the sweet spot there is the blue. So that's your best operating level. Now you can't magically get there. It's a matter of kind of balancing and giving and taking. But that's what you want to aim for. So let's look at an example. So your best operating level is set at, arbitrarily, 120 units a week. Your actual output is at 83 units a week. So if you look at, if you look at utilization for that, what you will see is, is you're not fully utilizing what you need to utilize. Optimal would be 120 over 120. I think this thing, oh, that's one, okay. It, it didn't click over. I'll, keep, I'll, I'll say that over again. That one slide, you can splice it in? Yeah, I can tell. Because I paused, yep. Mm -hmm. So now let's look at an example of utilization. So your best operating level is, at, let's say, arbitrarily 120 units a week. Your actual measured output is at 83 units a week. So if you look there at the formula, you have capacity used divided by the best operating level. So you have 83 divided by 120 which is, I don't have a calculator with me, which is clearly less than, a, less than 100%. What does that mean? What that means is, is that you have some capacity that you need to utilize. So we've talked a little bit about the best operating level, how you can calculate utilization. Now let's look at something that's called bottlenecks. Yep. So let's take a look at this. So let's say, for example, you have some raw material, we'll use a manufacturing example, and you have operation station number one, and they can get 200 through per hour. Operation uh, number two, they can get through 75 per hour. Operation number three, again, 200 per hour. So where's the bottleneck? Is it operation one, operation two, or operation three? You gotta commit, you gotta pick one. So hopefully you picked operation two. Why? Because your throughput at one is 200 per hour, and your throughput at operation three is 200. So where it's very slow is in the middle there. So given that, how would you brainstorm solutions to resolve that particular operational or capacity problem? How would you brainstorm it? So remember we talked about in terms of brainstorming. First you converge, get a diverse group of people at the table, diversity in many respects. Yep, make sure you fully leverage that diversity and then, once you have a whole big list of wild and crazy ideas, then you select the one that's most feasible. So when you think about what we've talked about is that brainstorming is very important in terms of quantitative management in healthcare, and capacity analysis is also important. The next tool we'll focus on is cause and effect, and that really does relate to the formulation of a problem, and remember, that's the first step in terms of making a structured decision. Again, my name is Marty Martin at DePaul University in the Health Sector Management MBA program. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your day or evening.